everybody. I've seen some of you and I've met a couple of you because I've been here through the day. First of all, congratulations to Robin and her fabulous crew and to Laura. And the, the speakers have been phenomenal. This is like a world-class event in terms of covering a lot of issues related to retail, the future of retail, a lot of inside scoops, so congratulations on that. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. And some of us think we've got an exciting panel too. So we're going to be talking about really putting together some of the things that you've heard today. How many of you have been here th through most of the day? Raise your hands. Oh, more than I thought. That's great. OK, super. I know some people have been in and out. So, But I think we're going to try to tie a little bit together, but also give you an overview about why ecosystems are so important in retail. And we're each going to speak roughly five minutes. And then at the end, we're going to talk as a panel. We're going to talk about some of the issues and the future of retail. And we're going to make sure there's enough time for questions. And also, each of us will be available in the back or at the end of the full event. So feel free to come up and ask us any questions. OK. Game on. It's the end of the afternoon. So I thought I would condense everything into one slide. And heads up, you better be ready for a quiz and a little homework towards the end, and I might have an audience participation aspect. But um, part of the exciting thing is we're, we want you to think like an ecosystem. And you've heard some great speakers today, and there's a lot of information. And what's for sure is the fact that if you look at the whole thing here, retail today, I have it anchored on the left by Macy's 34th Street. And retail today is really about ecosystem thinking, and I have it flanked on the side by race car, by Formula One. So that's the speed at which you've got to be able to think. So ecosystem today really involves thinking much beyond your own vertical. And a lot of the people in the room here, I know we have some retailers, but most people are involved or serve retail. And I think that the whole concept of ecosystem thinking is it's all the things that are going to impact your industry. And retail today, so if I just take one aspect, and I'll get into that soon, but we will be talking about the whole ecosystem approach. But I do want to introduce briefly Derek, Bimal, and Max, and they're going to give more detail when we get to their presentations, but we've got a, a great panel. But if you think about, let's take a few things that are common in a lot of the practice of retail. You buy, you try on, you pay, you deliver, and you return. OK, five years ago, there might have been a few options for each of those. But today, let's talk buy. You can buy physical retail, which is still 80% plus. OK, you can buy online. You can buy online and pick up in retail. You can buy via social media. You could buy via Amazon Dash and numerous other things. So when you think about that and each of the things that are happening, your world is more complex because there's more choices and more options. And the good news is that gives you, if you're new business, a chance to enter. But the challenging thing, if you're a business leader, is you have to have a whole new approach. It's not a straight vertical lane. So you've got to be thinking broadly across categories. And some of the speakers have spoken about that. But to be successful today in retail, you have to have what I call an ecosystem mind. You've got to be thinking both laterally in your industry, but across industry. Because the other thing, and the other thing that's going to be happening is, so you've got major new technologies. And what's fabulous about being here at CES is you get to see and touch them. Amazon Door, you know, Amazon Dash didn't mean much until I realized yesterday that my favorite peanut butter, if it doesn't make it on Amazon Dash and I have a connected refrigerator, I'm going to be out of luck. I'm going to have to make that happen. So it's a new world, and that's where you have to be incredibly flexible mentally and physically. So. What I wanted to talk about, so retail today, it's seismic changes and ecosystem thinking. And I've talked about some of these things. And our panel will be talking about what we haven't talked as much about is security, what's driving some of these ecosystems, and what are the trends there. We're going to be talking about AI and what that can do specifically, about IoT, and about some other things. And before I turn it over to the panel, the um, I want you to look at the Formula One race car on the, the far end of the slide. Okay, how many have ever been in a have how many have ever been to a Formula One race? Oh, okay, this is oh yeah, great. Well you know what I mean. Well what's impressive and why I use that analogy is I want you to be thinking differently. If you're in a Formula One 
car and the Formula One teams today are constantly innovating. They're constantly using new materials. They need the edge. They're like down to a second. The people who change the tires, it's incredible. So that type of analogy and the pace at which you have to think and be willing to both react, act, be proactive, and be willing to touch, touch lanes, it's, it's not as neat as it was. So someone who's your competitor, and I was telling Max, I met a gentleman from Tyco today, and he was telling me, well, they work with Avery Dennison. He said, well, we also sort of compete. So you have to get your mind to be a bigger thinker, and from the speakers, you heard about that today, about what especially they're doing in Asia and how that works. So we're, we've got a wonderful panel to talk about some of those things. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with BMOL first. If you could tee up the slides. Thanks. All right, thanks, Marie. So, you know, I run a cybersecurity company. So the first question you're probably asking is, why is a security guy talking on a retail forum? And I think it's very simple. If you think about uh, the extension that the customer is going through, is that they want consistency and simplicity no matter how they do business with you. And in retail, that could be the physical channel, it could be online, it could be a kiosk, it could be a computer, a mobile device, an Alexa, um, it could be a range of items. And what they're looking for is consistency and simplicity. So as a consumer, I know what I want is if I start a transaction with you in the store and I don't finish buying it, is there a way that I can go online, see exactly what I had in my hand, and then say, okay, I want this, this, and this, and click and go out? If I start a transaction online, can I go in the store and make it a seamless experience? You know, those are the things that consumers strive for. And retailers and brands spend tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, positioning a product, positioning an experience, and guess what? It gets ruined when you go try to buy it because you have to worry about payment. You have to worry about authentication. You have to worry about security. You have to worry about how do I return something and actually make sure that I'm getting a product back. There's all these elements that happen that when you invest in a brand, invest in an experience, your security can actually ruin all of those things. In fact, you know, I would tell you that the failure of security is not to think about customer experience. Uniken, the company I run, actually is a security company that has an amazing statistic. We've never had a loss, but more importantly, each of our clients has seen increased engagement by 100 to 300%. And the reason why is we designed the security platform with the consumer in mind from the bottom up. We said, let's not make that mistake. And as retailers, I think the message I'd want to leave with you is you have to start with what is the experience that you want and make sure not only is that in-store online piece part of it, but security is part of it. If you make your consumer do SMS codes, do authentication, do callbacks, have to wait in line on a phone call to get to you, that's ruining your experience. How many of you have ever had to call on a service appointment, waited 10 minutes, and then had to answer what your favorite color of uh, clothing was, what favorite ice cream you had, or, or simple questions in a call center interaction? Is that the experience that you want as a brand? How about an experience where you can come in, your call's recognized, you get a message on the phone, it says, Bimo, it's gonna be two minutes. Do, you have our, do we have your permission to have our phone rep look at your data? That consumer, when they get connected, that rep has all of their data, there's no GDPR compliance issues, no security issues, and you can solve their problem. Maybe you can even solve it while they're on the phone through some automated uh, systems that don't require back and forth. That's the kind of elements that you have to think about. What IoT has made more complicated, devices like Alexa, devices like a watch that you can do something, they really make purchasing a lot easier. But do they? So think about as a retailer, are you gonna allow Alexa to say, Alexa, I wanna buy that shirt that I just looked at that comes from X retailer, and go ahead and, and buy it. Well, Alexa just takes those words, translates that, and sends that data to somebody. Are you gonna take that Alexa message and say, okay, I can buy it, or are you gonna actually force that consumer to do something to prove who they are, to tell you who their payment message is, all of those things. Chances are, marketing is gonna say, that's the experience I want, 
Three other people are going to come into that value chain and say, here's how we're going to complicate it. And at the end of the day, that's going to be a transaction that says, Alexa, do this. And Alexa's going to say, great, it's in your cart. Now please call or log in, put in your credit card number, and do all that. That's where the mistake happens. You know, that's where the things start to fall down. So think about an experience that says, where do you want touch points with that consumer? Where do you want pain points? Do you want them to buy through your own credit facility? Do you want them to be able to use third-party payment products? And if they have to return something, if they need service, how do I link that all together so they never have to answer another question again? That's the kind of world uh, that I think you want to push for when it comes to multi-channel. When it comes to, whoops, went backwards. Ah, okay. So, what, I think we missed a slide somewhere then. Oh, so they swapped slides. Okay, so the slide that's missing in here is really an environment of, let's say, in-store. You know, you, you've all heard the Amazon wonderful store capability of walk in, pick your products, walk out. That's wonderful when we're talking about 10 or $12. How many of you want that to happen when the ticket is $500 or $700? How many people do you think uh, are going to say, as consumers, I'm comfortable allowing you to charge my credit card walking out without my ever seeing what the bill is, or I don't trust that. So you'll have to be more nimble. We have a client that is in Mexico that actually three years ago allowed consumers to walk in, enroll in a program where they just put their digital print down and walk out. But they have to go to a register, they get to see what they're buying, get to see the price, put their fingerprint down and walk out. That would be amazing if we could do that in the US or in other parts of the world. Again, the credit risk that they take is very different. Think about the new environment where I walk into a store and the theory is, is hey, I've got your facial, I've got uh, your phone, and I'm gonna just trigger a purchase when you walk out. Is the consumer actually gonna want some kind of message to say, yes, that's a correct charge? Is the consumer gonna want something afterwards? What happens to if I have to return? How are you incorporating that? Those are all things that, you know, when you look at the, the 60 second commercial or news story, don't get covered. You know, what happens? So in reality, if you do buy something and there's a mistake at the bill, the retailer that's doing that is crediting you back, right? Think of how much that could become for somebody who doesn't have one store, but has a thousand stores or 300 stores, or the ticket item happens to be hundreds of dollars. So again, I come back to the theme of, have you really looked at a customer experience in depth? Have you looked at all the touch points and make sure that the payment part of the solution doesn't fall down? The other piece is you're gonna hear from Derek and Mark some amazing stuff, is how does the technology that you're thinking about in security integrate to those two pieces? Because there's some amazing technology in IoT, in targeting, in AI, but again, there's that last mile problem, right? Which is how does it touch the consumer? How do you interact with the consumer? And generally, there's a security element. So our booth is in the SANS Exposition Hall, and it was amazing to walk around and see that everybody has a mobile app, or every has somebody, some connected environments. I think if you looked at the security underlying most of those, many of those brands are gonna have problems down the road because they didn't think about it up front. So my message to you is think about it up front, think about it from the consumer perspective, um, and come visit us if you want to learn more. Thanks, Vimal. Um, one of the things you've heard a lot from both Maureen and Vimal is about the complexity of retail. Uh, so I work at a company called Rubicloud. Uh, we're a, the world leading cloud native machine learning platform for enterprise retail. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, so I'll go into what that actually means and decompose that. Um, but there's been sort of three things that have happened in retail in the last 10 years. Uh, the first is retailers have invested heavily in digital transformation, everything from supply chain and product packaging, which you'll hear about in a second, right through to channel enablement, new mobile apps, uh, online presence. All of that comes with it a wealth of data. Uh, which is a good thing, and, and we hear a lot about how big data presents itself with new opportunities. Uh, the challenge with that is uh, oftentimes retailers are swimming in this data and they don't have a strategy for, for what to do with it. Um, the second thing that's happened in retail is the pro proliferation of cloud. Uh, so now basically compute is free and storage is free, and so we have this unlimited ability to, to number crunch uh, in, in recent times. 
And finally, the, the last thing that, that retailers have invested heavily in is, uh, is a focus on customer centricity, which we've heard about a little bit before. Um, so at RuboCloud, we sort of solve three problems. Uh, we build an enterprise retail data platform to aggregate customer data, uh, uh, assortment data, supply chain data. And then on top of that, we have two applica application layers, a price and promotion manager and a customer lifecycle manager. So we solve two distinct problems. One is, what products should I stock on my shelves? How much should I stock? Uh, how much should I price those products at? How should I promote them? Uh, and the second is, what customer should I talk to? How should I talk to them? Uh, what, what is the right timing, uh, messaging, offer? Uh, and all of that is built on this foundation of massive data that enterprise retailers are sitting on, as well as the ability to now compute uh, and, and apply machine learning and AI to, to that data. Um, so this is a little bit of a background on us. We're uh, from Canada. Uh, we recently closed our Series B uh, with Intel, and it's actually quite an interesting story there because Intel is focused very heavily on connected retail. And uh, so again, you see heavy investment into things like uh, digital transformation, supply chain, uh, but what's missing is this intelligence layer, and that's an area that we've chosen to focus, focus on. Um, so these are our three core products. I think what's more interesting than reading a bunch of text is actually sort of a, a real life sort of use case. So if you think about how retailers today plan a promotion, um, they have a defined promo period or a flyer week where they're thinking, uh, if, if I'm a category manager in, at Sephora, for example, I'm thinking, what lipsticks do I promote this week? How do I promote them? How do I discount them? Do I want to do a percentage off, a, a buy one, get one? And once I've, I've defined my promotional plan, I have to know how do I actually allocate those and buy against those uh, and, and basically stock at a store level to make sure that there's product on the shelf when the customer is there for that last mile. And so um, that's sort of a very uh, narrow problem, but if you think about how that expands out across you know, hundreds of stores and thousands of SKUs and multiple channels, the, the math quite quickly becomes untenable. And so this is the, the environment in which machine learning and, and AI are frankly going to outperform uh, any human being at, at doing this. So, so the example of promotional planning is actually, it sounds like quite a simple problem, but when you decompose what that means, as, as the category manager at Sephora, let's, let's say, if I put my lipstick on sale, that's gonna have effects not just within my lipstick category, it's gonna, it's gonna you know, either drive demand for eyeliner, I, I'm not a makeup aficionado, uh, but it, it may have impact on things like eyeliner and mascara, and those are things that frankly humans aren't considering today uh, and don't have the brain power to, to compute. Uh, and then on the customer side, it, it's a similar challenge. So if you have nine million loyalty customers, you have varying strategies, you have multiple products on offer, varying offer types, uh, and various channels, how do you know which customers to talk to, when to talk to them, and how to talk to them? Uh, and how do you optimize that against all the things that are going on in store, like mass promotional planning, like a flyer or a catalog? Um, you, you can't. And so, again, these are the environments in which machine learning is going to outperform any human at, at doing these tasks. And so we work with uh, some of the largest enterprise retailers at, at solving these problems. And you're available after. Yeah, I'll be available after in the back to talk about these. Thanks. Sure thing. All right, first, thanks everyone for uh, hanging around for this panel and, and, and thanks Maureen for, for including me and, and it's great to share a stage with some amazing entrepreneurs and really some exciting technology. At Avery Dennison, we're one of the, we are the number one uh, leader and partner uh, when it comes to UHF RFID. And so when we think about the role that we can play in the ecosystem and what I do as the lead of our corporate venture capital program, is what we can be doing to pull together all the different stakeholders through investments, partnerships, and collaboration to truly arrive at that future state for retail and to combine all of those capabilities. And it, it really comes down to, I think, two simple tenets that we feel and we think in our core or out in the ecosystem. The, the first is the pace of change will never be as slow as it is right now. I know that we've talked about Formula One cars and earlier today someone else talked about how the pace is only accelerating. And I think we need to think about it in this context. That we think it's fast now, wait until next year or wait until five years from now. It's actually going to be considered slow. 
So we need to move faster. In addition to that agility, soon every physical item will have a unique and universal digital identity. At the end of the day, in order for us to truly deliver the customer centricity and to be able to capture the data in a meaningful way to give retailers the insights they need to compete and to win in a time where we're all, as consumers, clouded with so much information and data overload, it's all about creating a way to connect the physical and digital worlds. You have to do that thinking about the way that we as consumers interact with products. So you have to think, how are you going to actually trigger that connection to the digital world? And then how are you going to create that digital ecosystem throughout the supply chain so that the retailers and the brands can truly use that to amplify that message and to get to that connected consumer and to that connected product to ultimately get to the experience that truly is personalized and frictionless. We look at it in kind of two buckets. The first is through a platform that we call Janela, which is all about connecting physical products to that digital world. It starts at the point where it's born digital. So imagine the ability for a brand to assign a unique serialized identity to every individual item, attribute that through various trigger technologies like QR codes or RFID or other tags to be able to interact as consumers to then bring that all the way through the value chain so that we as value chain participants can get insights into inventory accuracy, brand protection, and help make sure that we truly get the leanest, most efficient supply chain to the consumer, but it can't end in the store. It has to be a rich environment in the store, but then it has to continue all the way till the end of life or even the second life of that product. And that's where we see tremendous opportunity to really connect it. It's not just omni-channel anymore. It's actually an internet of everyday items and everyday things and connecting it. Lastly, what is, I think, also important is at the end of the day, and I think where you raised this too, it's still 80% physical retail. And at the opportunity here is that we can combine the capabilities of the technology, whether it's AI or other means, to truly deliver a personalized offline experience to mirror my online experience. And to create that ability to bring things from that online world into the offline world means that those opportunities can be quite massive and quite compelling. So here's a video of a startup that we invested in Israel called Gauzy that has developed what is called liquid crystal glass. And they're actually in the coding booth here. Um, I think that's in the sands, but, uh, or close to Westgate, I think, rather. Um, but you can see that they have developed a technology the of that they can turn sort of products, a film a that can go from transparent custom to custom opaque or, and back. Meaning that as opposed to having that big TV wall in front of and blocking your window and your merchandise, you can now create that experience that can be unlocked in real time in an interactive way and truly drive not just connecting the physical to the digital world, but also connecting the physical environment to replicate that online experience. So I look forward to partnering with a lot of the folks in this room and your colleagues, and I look forward to your questions as well in the panel discussion. Great, great discussion. Before I, I ask the, the brain trust here, the rock stars, that like vision, their vision not only is it, they've shared generously what they're doing that's really unique. It's, but I really want to make sure we tap into their vision of retail. But first, I forgot to really give a quick background that I have. So my background is marketing at Gillette, Levi's, and Mattel. And I've also been a public company board director for Decker's brand, so the big brand is UGG. So I've been everything from brand managing Launch, brand manager launching products to board director overseeing the growth of a company. So that's my perspective. I'm currently on the board of Fashion Incubator in San Francisco, which is funded by Macy's. But I just wanted to give you that background. And now I want to ask, and I'm going to start with Max. We're going to do it in reverse. Okay. So, you know, the people here today have had some fabulous experiences, and I want each of you to talk about your vision of retail in three to five years. Absolutely. I, I think our vision for retail is that it, it never ends in the sense that it truly does become a, a, a loop of, of feedback. And we believe that there's technology and there's interesting companies that are out there that you've heard from today, like Aware. There's other companies like Williot in Israel that are creating a way for a truly passive experience. So we don't have to tap our phone or scan a QR code, but simply because we're all walking Bluetooth beacons, as an example, we can start to, we can leverage that connected world and then 
constantly be giving that background feedback data so that retailers can have real insights, brands can develop new products in unique ways, and it can be a truly frictionless experience. That's great. Okay, Bill? Uh, you know, if I had to look forward, I think a, a world where I could walk into a store for the first time, um, they can kind of profile me really quickly, uh, physically, um, and allow me to try stuff on, automatically tag it so I can go home, uh, show my spouse, but they can actually see me with the clothes, and I can switch clothes through and wow. purchase. I think that's the where the technology is headed. Mm -hmm. And you know, from a social media perspective, then broadcast that if I choose to or don't yep. choose to. Great. Great. Uh, I'll, I'll take a more pra pragmatic view. I think. From my perspective, in the next three years, it would be nice to be able to walk into a grocery store and buy the front page item and they have it actually available in store uh, and have the intelligence behind that to actually build a forecast and make sure that inventory is there and it's fresh. Um, and I, again, I think data is really going to unlock the, the ability to, to get there. And it's, it, I actually would, would challenge, I think that for both of those, the, the future state is actually here already. Uh, and I think it's about combining the content that needs to exist and really rich, engaging content, but then with those trigger technologies. So I can, I can know that based on the weather and what you're wearing, oh, you should go buy that scarf and it's over there because of RFID, and, but also because of the AI and the contextual data around what's going on and what should be on sale based on that, that person's profile that you can capture right in that moment. Good, feel free. We're going to open up the questions a minute. I guess mine is similar to where it has been, smart, connected, experiential. But what I think is really different this year, and if you were look at my slide that had, it, you know, had 5G start off, of course, AI voice. I would have thought there'd be more going on with voice and all the new technologies. It's the fact that it's going to be the combination. And you heard about the beauty brands talking about AI and AR. So I think that's what's the unexpected. It's that, it's not just the new technologies, it's new business models. So again, my friend Michael's in the background, and even though Gillette is a company I own shares in and I work for, Procter & Gamble owns them, they lost it a bit when Dollar Shave Club came out. So you have to be on the lookout, not only for the new, the new technologies and the categories and the implications, but also what new business models the consumers have changed. Gen Z definitely is into sharing economy. They don't value brands in the same way they used to. So you really need to be looking at these things. So new technologies, new business models, new combinations, and really be aware of what your target market is, is doing and interested and thinks about you. Okay, now a quick, if you also have any other thoughts or words of advice for the audience before I turn it and I know Amanda Costco had a question in the front audience, so, or Michael, I'm teasing all the people I know, but we'll, we'll raise it. So do you have any advice for like, how, you know, it's overwhelming when you think everything we heard today is just amazing. See, gee, should I be doing some of these other things right now or test or what do you do? And it's really, how do they, how do they manage in terms of the priorities of grasping and really putting together a lot of the great information they heard today and what, how do they manage that? We're gonna start with you, Derek. Uh, yeah, so I mean, again, an overwhelming theme has been complexity. Like, this is not a problem that's going to get more easier. It's going to get harder and harder to solve as things like beacons, RFID come online. And you need to be thinking a few years ahead of how do I manage that data? What's my strategy for optimizing against this stuff? Uh, because if you're not investing to solve that problem today, you're, you're, you're out of luck. Like, this stuff is coming faster than, than we think it is. So I, I think a similar theme. You, you have to think about the entirety of the experience, uh, which is the technology, it's the physical presence, it's the data, and how you bring that together. But I'll actually be a little bit controversial and say I think most brands and retailers get it wrong because they sit in the ivory tower and they don't really think about it from a consumer perspective. So I would say, you know, think about the experience you want, how you want it connected together, and chances are if that's how you're thinking, and you've got the right demographic in your company, you have the answer already. Maybe execute on that rather than thinking what you, you believe somebody wants. Okay. Yeah, and I, th I think that's a really, that's a, that's a good point. And I think on, I'd layer on top of that that a lot of attention, especially when you think about digital identity and some of the, 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 the things that I think are most critical, is also how as an ecosystem we come together to set the standards. 
and, and truly the standards on different levels, so universal identification, on security, on, on, because if we're connecting products and consumers, how can we truly not only create it as a, as a frictionless experience, but a trusted experience? And, and ultimately for me to engage, that is really something that I as a consumer would want to know and see that my, my content is safe, even if it's all happening constantly around me. Great, now we have time for a couple quick questions. Okay, Amanda. Hang on. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Um, so I'm interested with Ava Denson. I know you've been doing some collaborations with everything, mm -hmm. uh, with the Roche and Bojack that you did to make products come to life. Yep. And you've done it kind of on a, um, a small scale. But now with Rebecca Minkoff and other you know, brands like that involved, it seems like you're ready to scale it. Do you have any updates for us in terms of um, making those connected objects really come Absolutely, we, we have a we have a very exciting investment that we're announcing next Monday, so stay tuned. Um, that uh, that that will will be uh, really I think the next extension of our platform because we really believe it's about having the ability for the consumer, depending on the type of product, to have the right way to trigger to connect it from that physical to the digital world. And so we think that right now we have the opportunity to now pull together that entire platform of intelligent labels, as we call it and combine that with the ability to make things more digital and now begin to scale it. So I think you'll hear some very exciting, we'll as, as we said, the pace of change will never be as slow. Yeah. You'll hear some exciting things coming out in 2019 for sure. Great. Any others? Well, what I'm gonna do is ask you, remember, you, you're not off the hook. I said, you have a homework assignment. Part of what you heard today were so many good things. And we just talked a little bit about prioritizing some of these things. One of the things, this is sort of a board director thing, but it really relates to everybody. If you're going to be a Formula One race car driver, you need to think like a board director strategically. So I want you to be thinking about a lot of what you heard today and say, even if you don't know or you're not interested in some of these things, you say, what are the strategic impacts on my business, you know, getting exposure to a lot of what you heard today, so that you're at least aware of that and to say, even if you don't think it's going to impact your business strategically, what could it do? What could happen? Because in that way, you will have thought in a bigger way and you would have been aware and you'll be adding value not only to your own business, but all the people you interact with. So I want to thank this rock star panel and Robin and the crew.